What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So for the last couple of years, Samsung's upper tier A-series phones have been some of the best sub $500 phones you could buy. And this year's A54 is no exception. It has really 90% of what you'd get in a flagship S-series phone for nearly half the price. And I truly think it's the best Android device for a vast majority of people. It has a great display that's just as good as the S23s. It takes pictures and videos that that, as long as you're not a professional filmmaker, look really good too. The A54 was also redesigned to look identical to the flagship S series. So if you're maybe a little vain, you can be sure no one is gonna notice you opted for the budget Samsung phone this year. It's honestly a nearly perfect smartphone that oozes value, but with one minor exception. Performance-wise, it could be a little better. And if you're vaguely familiar with the innards of this smartphone, you'd know what this is all about already. Samsung's new Exynos processor once again falls short in delivering the fast and fluid user experience that it probably should. To put things into perspective, when I tested this A54 against the A34, a phone that's supposed to be one step below it, their speeds were nearly identical. And in some cases, the A34 was even a little quicker. So we've definitely got to talk about that. But if you're considering the A54 right now, even with my gripes about performance, I still think you should get it. I've thoroughly enjoyed it over the last few months of using it. I've actually taken it basically all around the world now, and I think it's just such a good device for the price. Speaking of travel, last week when I was in Oregon, I got a notification that someone was attempting to buy action figures online with my credit card. Seriously, I was lucky enough to get the transaction canceled, but I quickly realized that my carelessness with public Wi-Fi at airports and restaurants might have been the culprit. My personal information was compromised, and that's never a good feeling. To help combat that, I'm now using a VPN from Private Internet Access, who are kind enough to sponsor this video. Private Internet Access encrypts my network connection, hides my IP address, and shields my digital life from nefarious actors who might otherwise try to steal my information, like credit card numbers, passwords, even pictures and files. And I can keep all my devices protected, literally an unlimited amount with one subscription. Everything from my MacBook to my iPhone and all the Android devices I test out too. And since I sometimes travel to other countries, private internet access also comes in handy when I want to view region-specific content that may not be viewable outside the US, like Hulu or Netflix. You can change your IP address on the fly to one of 84 different countries and all 50 states. Private internet access is the world's most transparent VPN provider. They never record or store user data, and their no-logs policy has been tested and proven by third-party audits. Join the more than 30 million people, including myself, who use private internet access to keep their online activity and sensitive information protected. Head on over to piavpn.com slash techdaily or click the link in the video description below to get 83% off and four months free. It's the best $2 per month you could possibly spend to help keep you safe online. So in a number of other videos where I've talked about this A54, I had said that the redesign to more closely mimic Samsung's S series was a pretty big positive, something a lot of people would like. I got comments suggesting that this actually wasn't a big deal, but we live in a world where status is everything. People make fun of things they perceive as cheap or outdated. A-series phones previously had felt a little cheap, all plasticky, and looked a little outdated too, but not the A54. It's a glass and aluminum build with the exact same design front and back as Samsung's $800 or $900 flagships. And I even like the color selection for these phones better than the S series. They're more fun and interesting. Again, as dumb as that may sound, it's also something people care about. Yeah, you've still got more noticeable black borders surrounding the display, but to my eyes, this phone is a decisive departure from the obviously budget A-series phones of years past. It looks great. It's unfortunately still missing some things that would otherwise bring it up to par to an S-series phone. There's still no wireless charging. There's no headphone jack, though that's not unusual. The phone also technically isn't as dust and water resistant or as tough and rugged as an S-series phone. It's a pip lower on the IP certification scale, and the front and back glass aren't Gorilla Glass Victus. But you still get an SD card slot, so that's one point in favor of the A54, and the in-display fingerprint sensor is far better than what we used to have on previous A50-something and A70-something phones, though again, it's not the ultrasonic sensor that the S-series phones have had, so it's not as quick to unlock. It's also got dual stereo speakers for a better out-loud listening experience. 
experience. So all in all, its physical features are almost what you'd want to see on a mid-tier or higher-end phone, and I personally don't have anything to complain about there. The display on the A54 is also probably better than you'd expect. It's a 6.4-inch Super AMOLED 120Hz display at the full 2340x1080 resolution. Spec for spec, it's almost the display you'd get on the S23. The flagship phones have a better AMOLED panel, and they're quite a bit brighter too, but Everything else, the real important stuff, makes this A54, I think, the best phone for the money when it comes to the viewing experience. Visually, you get a very bold and colorful looking screen with vibrant colors, deep blacks, and it's the exact resolution it needs to be in order to look sharp. Samsung didn't really cut any corners here. It's also a 120Hz adaptive high refresh rate display, so it's fast and responsive when it needs to be with your taps and touches, but otherwise actively limits the refresh rate to conserve battery life and heed any performance issues, sometimes at least. But the 120Hz display on its own is a flagship spec. You'll notice though that this phone definitely still has a lot of glare. That, I think, is the product of both cheaper glass, Gorilla Glass 5, and brightness levels that still fall short of what you'd see on a flagship Android or iPhone. The display is not exactly dim by any means, but at 1000 nits of max brightness via the adaptive auto brightness option, that's 200 nits lower than the S23's user-controlled brightness and 750 nits lower than peak auto brightness. So in that regard, the A54 falls way short of a flagship phone, but it's not an issue. It doesn't give you a bad viewing experience necessarily. It's no Motorola phone. It's just the one thing that reminds you that this still is, in fact, a mid-tier phone within Samsung's budget lineup. On the surface, the A54 appears to be the complete package. Nice build, good add-on, solid display, but like I alluded to, its internal specs and performance, I think, is where it gets some much-deserved criticism. This phone is powered by Samsung's new mid-tier chipset, the Exynos 1380. You have the option of of either 6 or 8 gigs of RAM, and 128 or 256 gigs of storage, I think most people, especially here in the US, will be stuck with the lower tier configuration option, which by itself isn't really a bad thing. 6 gigabytes of RAM is fine, you still get the SD card slot anyway, like I said, but performance-wise, when you really start to play around with this phone, you quickly realize that it really just doesn't perform like a $400 or $500 Samsung phone should. Now, let me be clear, there are no specific glaring performance issues. I didn't have to reboot the phone for any reason. I wasn't stuck waiting on random things to load. The phone didn't overheat. It accomplishes the tasks I expect it to, but the more apps you have open, the longer you use the phone in a single session, the more stuff it has to do all at once, the less fluid and responsive it becomes. And furthermore, when I put this phone up side by side with Samsung's A34 and that speed test, a phone that's supposed to be a lower tier device by comparison and cheaper too, it oftentimes was just as fast to launch and load different applications, and sometimes the A34 beats the A54 decisively. That phone has a fan favorite Snapdragon processor inside, and my personal experience with the A54, coupled with that speed test comparison, has sort of revealed two separate issues in my opinion. For one, Samsung's Exynos chipsets, even their newest updated ones, still suffer from something. Performance issues, thermal throttling, being underpowered, whatever the case is, they are just simply not as good as comparable or even slightly lesser specced Snapdragon chips. And issue number two is the fact that phones today are so close in speed and spec that it's becoming harder and harder to actually differentiate between them. There's going to be a big difference between the A54 and an S series phone still, but between the couple of A series phones, not so much. So that means that if performance is most important to you, you probably already have a flagship Samsung phone. If it isn't, maybe the A34 for less money is the better buy here. You miss out on some other stuff, of course, going with the A34. It is the lesser device, but the phones are so close this year that it's not a huge deal. In any event, the A54 continues to be a great overall value, and Samsung even pledged four years of Android updates and five years of security patches. So it's now a long-term sort of phone, too. You could keep this phone for the full four years or wait a year or two before 
before you even buy it in the first place, and you'll know that you're good for a few more years beyond that. I think besides the stigma over Samsung's Exynos processor, the A54 is still such a solid bang for your buck device. I just wish Samsung would have done something to cement this phone as a true performance focused device. It's not decisively better than the A34, and I still think some people will just look down on it for having an Exynos processor at all. Unfortunately, I also think the overall efficiency is a minor issue with the Exynos chipset that also negatively impacts battery life. The A54 doesn't last as long as the A34, likely for a combination of reasons, but I wouldn't call this phone a powerhouse device by any means, even with a 5000 milliamp battery inside. It'll make it through the day most of the time without issue, even with some above average usage. And the faster 25 watt charging speeds help things too, the phone charges relatively quickly for an an A series phone at least, but you still need to go out and supply the fast charger yourself. It's not included in the box, which continues to just be an annoying and unnecessary thing that plagues today's smartphones. Finally, when it comes to the cameras, I've actually taken hundreds of pictures with this phone now over the last few months, and I have to say, it's surprised me for sure with just how good the images can look. But it's still no flagship, and the most astute among us will be able to tell that this is an A series camera setup. The rear main lens is a 50 megapixel shooter, which you can take full advantage of with the high megapixel shooting mode. You can capture a lot more detail in every shot. There's a 12 megapixel ultra wide, which I think is a must have, and the five megapixel macro lens, which I personally don't care for much, but I guess it comes in handy from time to time. The selfie lens is a solid 32 megapixel shooter, and inside the camera app, Samsung presents you with most of the shooting modes and options you'd want, and some stuff you'll likely never use, though there's nothing specific here on this phone that you wouldn't otherwise find on any other Samsung phone from the last few years. You can shoot 4K video, there's some additional camera settings that bump this phone up a notch or two higher than most other budget devices, and like I mentioned, I've wound up taking some really good pictures and videos with this phone. I would personally describe the images as bright and colorful, two traits that the average person would probably see as a positive. The images at times though do look over-processed. The real world isn't nearly as saturated as this phone makes it seem, but I know a lot of people just like punchy, bold-looking images. When you look close, you can see that the phone doesn't capture as much detail as it probably should, and if there are instances of extreme lighting conditions, bright areas, dark shadows, things start to fall apart. It's very easy for a picture to look blown out with the sun or a light in the background, and some of the dark areas just completely disappear. Like I said, this is still very much a mid-tier phone with mid-tier camera capabilities, but honestly, the strides Samsung has made with their camera setup on these phones have been significant the last two or three years, and I think for a vast majority of people who would otherwise not even utilize the full capabilities of a flagship smartphone camera, we'll see the A54 as a perfectly fine picture and video taker. In my opinion, Samsung's A54 is absolutely the phone to buy for 99% of people. At well under 500 bucks and really under $400 most days, it's a fraction of the price of a flagship phone, the ones that Samsung really wants you to buy, but it has almost everything a normal person could want. It's nicely designed, built well, nothing's been removed, there's very little compromises, it's got a great display, takes solid pictures. The most technologically inclined amongst us will certainly criticize performance a little bit. It's probably this phone's only real weakness, but it might be more subjective than anything else. If you're picky about processors and throw a fit at the sight of an Exynos chip, you probably don't own this phone anyway. But for everyone else looking for a solid Samsung smartphone for a much more palatable price, the A54 is certainly the phone for you. What do you guys think about the A54? Do you have one? Let me know your thoughts or experience with it in the comments down below. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video or at least found it helpful. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.